my geography class. Today we will continue with the chapter of manufacturing industries of class 10. In our last video, we have discussed about the textile industry and the cotton textile industry. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the jute textile industries and also about the sugar industry. We will discuss the factors which are responsible for concentration of the jute textile industry around the Hooghly Basin region. We will also discuss the challenges that are faced by the jute textile industry. We will discuss that what are the reasons which are leading to the shift of sugar industry from North to South India. We will also discuss about the major challenges that are faced by the sugar industry. So without wasting much of our time, let's get started. Now let us move ahead with the jute textiles. In terms of production of raw jute and jute goods, India is the largest producer of raw jute and jute goods. It is also the second largest exporter after Bangladesh. So in terms of export, Bangladesh comes first. Most of the jute mills are located in West Bengal. And why this is so? Because 70% of the jute production comes from West Bengal and the remaining from the other parts of the country. Most of the jute mills, they are located along the Hooghly River in West Bengal, which is a narrow belt and it is quite suitable for the growth of the jute here. Now let us find out that which are the factors responsible for the location of jute mills in the Hooghly Basin. So the first factor is a proximity of the jute producing areas. Now when I say proximity, it means close by. So jute is produced around the Hooghly Basin and thus it reduces the cost of transportation. Let us move ahead with the next factor which is inexpensive water transport which is available here. Water transport is the cheapest mode of transport and waterways are naturally available so it hardly needs any maintenance. That is why it is regarded as the cheapest mode of transport and here inexpensive water transport is easily available. Along with inexpensive water transport, the Hooghly River Basin is also supported by a good network of other transports, the railways, the roadways, which facilitate the movement of raw materials to meals. Now let us move ahead with the next factor. The next factor is that there is abundant water available for processing raw jute. Now jute requires 8 months to grow. It is tall, thin, steam like. So the farmers have to cut it and they have to soak it in the brackish water so that the outer layer get decomposed. Then they obtain the raw jute which they wash in the water and let it dry. So all this processing needs a lot of water and this water is easily available from the nearby rivers. Next factor is the availability of cheap labor from West Bengal and also from the adjoining states of Bihar, Odisha and Uttar Pradesh. The next factor is Kolkata which is an urban center and this provides banking, insurance and port facilities for export of jute goods. Now let us know that when was the first jute mill set up in Kolkata. The first jute mill was set up near Kolkata in 1855 at Rishwa. After partition in 1947, three-fourths of the jute producing area went to Bangladesh. So you can understand that if there would have been no partition, then the whole jute producing region would have been in our country, India itself. Now there are some challenges which are faced by the jute industry. What are the challenges that are faced by the jute industry? The jute industries face stiff competition in the international market from the synthetic substitution like the plastic as they are quite cheaper, they are convenient to use, so they are in great demand. So the jute industry did face a steep competition in the international market. It also faced supply competition from other jute producing nations like Bangladesh, Brazil, Philippines, Egypt and Thailand. So these regions also produce a good quality of jute and they also supply good quality of jute to the international market. But the government has tried all its effort to increase the demand of jute and to increase the production of jute. And for this, the government has introduced a policy of national jute policy in 2005. So in 2005, the national jute policy was formulated to increase the demand, 
the productivity and improving the quality so that it can ensure good prices to the jute farmers and it can also enhance the yield per hectare that means to increase the production per hectare it also aims to enhance the yield per hectare that means to increase the production of jute now the demand is also increasing due to the growing global concern for environment friendly biodegradable materials there is less use of plastic nowadays because it is not environment friendly and it is causing a lot of pollution in the environment so the government is urging to abolish the use of plastics rather to use the jute bags which is quite environment friendly and made up of biodegradable material in terms of packaging government is also making it mandatory to use jute packaging in terms of packaging The main markets of jute are USA, Canada, Ghana, Saudi Arabia, UK and Australia where there is a huge demand of jute. Now let us move ahead with the next topic that is the sugar industry. India is the second largest producer of sugar. Then who is the largest producer of sugar? Brazil ranks the first. because 50% of the sugarcane production is from brazil and 25% is from india but in terms of the production of gur and khansari india ranks the first so india is the first largest producer of gur and khansari now this industry is a raw material based industry now what does this mean this means that whichever regions producing sugarcane in yeah, those areas only we will find sugar industries so sugar industries are established where they are established near sugarcane producing areas now the raw materials that are used is quite heavy and bulky that means it takes more space so the cost of transportation of raw materials is more than the cost of the finished product now what does this mean now suppose if you take 10 trucks of sugarcane from the sugar producing area to the sugar industry finally we will only get one truck of sugar so we can understand that the cost of transportation for transporting 10 trucks of sugar cane is much higher than the cost of transportation of one truck of sugar that is a finished product now as we are saying that the raw materials that are used is quite bulky and in haulage it sucrose contain reduces now what does this mean This means that this industry is also called a wet losing industry. Now once the sugar cane is cut within 24 hours it must be transported to the mill why to obtain sugar cane because gradually the sucrose contained get lost and with commercial transport of sugar cane to the industry the sucrose contained will go on reducing more and more more the industries will be located far away more there will be reduction in the sucrose content why because the bond of the sucrose get loosen up so amount of sugar that we will obtain will also get reduced so we can say that this industries are also known as wet losing industries and in haulage its sucrose contained reduces now we will find that most of the sugar mills are located in the states of uttar pradesh bihar maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh gujarat punjab haryana and madhya pradesh Now we will find out that 60% of the sugar mills are located in the states of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. This industry is ideal for the cooperative sector. Now what do you mean by cooperative sector? This sector are owned and managed by a group of people. Generally the members are the producers of raw materials. Now the sugar industries are ideal for the cooperative sectors why? This industry is seasonal in nature. Now for entire year the farmers are engaged in producing sugarcane as it is an annual crop. Now when the crop is reaped and the farmers pull together the resources they set up the mills within the sugarcane producing areas and they produce sugar. So due to the seasonal nature of the sugarcane industry it is combated by setting up cooperatives where the farmers can share the profits and losses. Now we will see that this industries were mostly located in the northern states of our country India but now we will see that there is a shift of concentration 
of means from the northern states to the south and western states now let us find out what are the reasons behind the shift and concentration of mills in the southern and northern states the sucrose contained grown is higher in peninsular india now in the peninsular india the sugar cane that are grown they have high sucrose content thus more sugar can be extracted from the same amount of sugar cane this is the first reason for the concentration of mills in the southern and western states then comes the cooler climate which is available in the southern and western states in north india the summers are less hotter and in southern india they have a cooler climate which ensures a longer crushing season so that is why there is a shift from north india to south and western india then comes the success of the cooperatives in this state as i said that sugar industries are mostly cooperatives and here in the southern states we will see that cooperatives are much more successful than the northern states so that is why there is a shift of sugar mills from north to the southern and the western states now we will see that sugar industry also faces some of the challenges now let us understand which are the challenges faced by the sugar industry the major challenges are the sugar industry is a seasonal industry this is because of the seasonality of the raw material sugar cane is harvested in a particular season only the sugar mills are operative for a part of the year only during the crushing season so we can say that it employs people for only few months in a year the next challenge is the need to maximize the use of bagasse now what is bagasse bagasse means the pulp which remains after the extraction of juice from sugar cane now this is used as a bio fuel which is used as an important fuel source in sugar mills as it is naturally extracted fiber therefore it has many important uses and that is why there is a need to maximize the use of bagasse during the extraction of sugar cane juice in mills the next challenge is the old and inefficient methods of production till now the sugar industry they uses traditional old inefficient methods of production so this is a major challenge which is faced by the sugar industry the next challenge is the delay in transport in reaching cane to the factories now we will see this is another important challenge that is faced by the sugar industry most of the time the transport get delay it may be due to huge traffic or it may be due to under developed transportation network as there is delay in reaching cane to the factories the sucrose content also reduces and very less amount of sugar is obtained in the industry so this are the major challenges that are faced by the sugar industry I hope all of you understood the topics that has been covered in today's video. With this, we are completing with the topic of the agro-based industries. There is a PDF which is attached in the description box, which will help to make the chapter more easier for you. If you still have any problem, you can let me know by just a comment in the comment box given below. If you like my video, don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe my channel to watch more videos. Stay tuned. I will be back soon with a new video and a new topic. Till then, take care, study well, and stay safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.